When we are exploring the timeline of the US stock market, we can observe some notable stock market crashes since the 19th and 20th centuries. But the modern generation has a less idea about them as the information was not readily available compared to the current crashes. So, the aim of this video is to find some interesting facts about one such crash of the US stock market, which is called the Rich Man's Panic, that happened in 1901. This crash happened because of the struggles between the wealthy business people during that period over the financial control of the Northern Pacific Railway. So, let's begin our journey to the early part of the 20th century. Yeah, but how do these super smart people with all these degrees and higher mathematics end up doing these dumb things? I think it's explainable by the old proverb that to a man with a hammer, every problem looks pretty much like a nail. It was 1901 when the whole United States was in a rapid development process with the expansion of its industrial sector, and investors were in a mood that they wanted to explore the new corners of the economy. They were trying different types of investments, and the North Pacific Railway project came forward as one such mega-scale infrastructure development project which was said to be a profitable investment opportunity during that era. This railway line was built in the north tier of the western United States, from Minnesota to Pacific West, under different investors. As this railway line was run over a large area through the states of Idaho, Minnesota, North Dakota, Oregon, Washington and Wisconsin, covering a total distance of 6,800 km, it had the potential to generate heavy profits. The proposal to build the railway line was approved by the Congress in 1864, and the construction began six years later, in 1870. One of the famed financiers in the country during that era, Jay Cook got the control of the North Pacific Railway Company as the government struggled to find the necessary funding to build the railway line by itself. Constructions were mainly going through an unpopulated territory at that period, and contractors had to deal with difficult terrain conditions like swamps, bogs and tamarack forests, creating an extra cot to deal with these conditions. Jay Cook had no proper idea about the cost of the investment when he began the project and his company went bankrupt in 1873, halting the construction activities of the railroad. However, the railway line was lucky to save itself from bankruptcy thanks to a last-minute loan from the director John C. Ainsworth of Portland. The constructions were not completed at once and they were carried out step by step. Two years later, the railway line went for bankruptcy again in 1875. Then, a new management under the leadership of Charles Wright took the control of the line. During the period between 1876 to 1880, only a small amount of construction activities was carried out as the financial situation was not good. Henry Willard decided to invest his money on the Western Railroads and captured the power of the North Pacific Railway Line, step by step. He wanted to control the shipment of American crops across the Pacific and the transshipment of Asian goods across America's heartland. The Burlington was a critical asset. But it took a few more years for Villard to understand that the North Pacific Railway Line was a long railway line with little business. Not only Villard, most of the people understand the fact and Wall Street bears attacked the stocks of the company few days after the golden spike. Villard resigned from the post of presidency of the company and Robert Harris became his replacement. After Harris, many people were appointed to the post of president within a brief time interval. Then in 1886, colonization began in the region, increasing the business for the railway line and more and more investors, including Villard. For the first time, the North Pacific Railway Line faced a competition from the Great Northern Railway owned by James Jerome Hill. Everything started to change when J.P. Morgan showed its interest in the North Pacific Railway Line after the Panic of 1893. In addition to J.P. Morgan, James Hill also bought a considerable number of shares of the North Pacific Railway Line. However, the Morgan Lieutenant Charles Henry Costa and the new president, Charles Sanger Mellon, kept the North Pacific Railway Line as an independent company regardless of the influence of James Hill. James Hill was interested in the North Pacific Line as he wanted to connect his Great Northern Railway to Chicago by an existing railroad. In addition, that... E.H. Harriman wanted to connect his Union Pacific Railroad to Chicago as well. That's why all of them wanted to buy the shares of the North Pacific Railway Company despite it had little business prior to the colonization. 
Realizing the gravity of the situation, Harriman and Morgan joined forces to prevent catastrophe. Morgan, still in Europe, rushed to the Paris office of Morgan Harges and Company. As news of the panic reached him, Harriman faced out against his two strongest rivals on the railroad investments, James J. Hill and J.P. Morgan. Harriman wanted his Union Pacific to be able to link directly into Chicago through Chicago, Burlington and Quincy. However, James J. Hill acquired control of the route for the Northern Pacific before he could complete his plans, and he chose not to include Mr. Harriman in the arrangement. This meant war to a man of Harriman's character, so he tried to buy up enough North Pacific stock on the open market to pressure Hill and Merge into agreeing to something. He had purchased about $65 million worth of Northern Pacific stock out of a total of $155 million when he took the certificate to Morgan and demanded a share in the Burlington purchase. By spending an additional $15 million on the common stock, Morgan had $43 million, and when combined with the stock held by his partners, he held a total of $80 million in the company's common stock. The Harriman contingent held $78 million, but of the total capitalization, $75 million was in preferred stock and could be retired at par. Then a battle between these enormous powers to gain control of the Northern Pacific started, and it ended with the most spectacular day on Wall Street in the history of the American economy. This conflict was the cause of a panic on May 9, 1901, when the share price of Northern Pacific increased to $1,000. The battle got so dangerous that a truce had to be called, and Harriman once more employed Union Pacific funds rather than his own. This was an expensive deal. It cost a lot of money worth enough for the Union Pacific to acquire the Southern Pacific, the Northern Pacific to acquire the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy, the Hill and Harriman factions to engage in the frantic purchase of Northern Pacific stock that culminated in the panic of May 9th, and for Mr. Morgan to swing his very unique steel trust to say nothing of other and somewhat lesser deals in which the great factions in Wall Street were interested. When the market collapsed on the afternoon of May 8th, the panic started. Investors did not anticipate it, but by 1 p.m., the market fell. Burlington stock started to show a gradual drop. After flying high throughout the morning, there was a sudden decline in the evening. Stocks such as St. Paul, Missouri Pacific and Union Pacific saw an overall drop in price. The entire market soon began to float away. Investors who had once held on tightly to their stocks were selling out of panic. Others caught on, and the entire floor of the New York Stock Exchange erupted in a roar of sell, sell, sell. During this intense selling, a rumor spread among traders that the broker for J.P. Morgan and the owner of A.A. Hausman & Company, Arthur Hausman, had died. In order to confirm that J.P. Morgan was still doing business, Arthur Hausman was brought to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on the day that the stock market crash happened. This scenario of 1901 happened primarily as a result of their own carelessness, upsetting all of their plans for marketing this enormous quantity of Northern Pacific stocks. The most affected set of stocks includes the companies like St. Paul, Union Pacific, Missouri Pacific, Amalgamated Copper, Sugar, Atchison, and United States Steel. But at the same time, stocks of the North Pacific Railway Company experienced an advancement of 16.5 points. Because of this crash, Harriman and Hill had to combine its operation at the end, establishing the Northern Securities Company to control the Northern Pacific, the Great Northern, and Burlington. But it was shut down shortly under the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890. That is how the competition between the leading investment companies for the ownership of railway lines led to the collapse of the stock market in 1901. Our present generation is not familiar with this type of stock market collapse that happened a long time ago. But the United States economy had learned some important lessons from these types of stock collapse that happened over the last century. What are your thoughts on these railway wars that happened at the latter part of the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th century? Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe us for more interesting economic news.